Hello! It's been a while. <laughs> no, it was just last week. Hello, welcome to a new video. My name is Elena for those who don't know me. I'm 25 and I live in Australia, but I'm originally from France. So I thought that I was going to share with you 10 things that almost shocked me when I moved to Australia back when I was 18. We're talking seven years ago. Yes, I just thought it would be interesting for me to share that with you because for those who are planning on coming, it's important for you to know those things and for those who might never come or don't wish necessarily to come because they've heard so many things about Australia that afraid them to come. I have some friends like that that don't want to come because of the spiders. We'll talk about this later. I think it would be a pretty good insight for you to know what to expect living in the country down under. So today is a very warm day. Well, actually, you know what? It's actually the first point, the weather. In Australia, let's just say that I would be comparing everything to France, obviously, because that's the only life that I know outside of Australia, living on a daily basis. France, for example, Paris in particular. I grew up in Paris feeling, let's just say, not the happiest at all times because of the weather. Paris is kind of well known in France for being almost grey all year round. We do have those beautiful days here and there obviously but it's very close to England. Nothing else to add to that. So one of the first things that actually shocked me in Australia is the weather. Out of 365 days we're talking over 300 days of sunshine. I didn't know it existed and of course we're gonna have rainy days and cloudy days but you can count them in a year, which is to me surprising because in France, you can count the sunny days. <laughs> On a daily basis, it completely changed everything for me. I didn't realize that the sun could actually impact your mood so much. But you didn't seriously think that I was gonna tell you all of those points just sitting here in a room. Nah, that wouldn't be fun. You're coming along with me. Let's explore a little bit. Bear with me, I might be sweating a little bit today, but just pretend that you can't see it, okay? Today we're gonna head to a national park. The lookout I've heard is stunning. And then later on we're gonna go to the beach that I believe you will find stunning. I cannot wait to show you. Ah, that's better. The second point is how safe Australia is. I forgot to tell you by the way, I'm just going to be cooking something very fast. You're not even going to notice. Put in the slow cooker so then to do what I go away, my food is cooking for tonight. So, yes, Australia to me is a safe country. Because coming from Europe, like I told you earlier, let's just say that in France is not as safe as maybe the rest of the world might think and that's something that i had completely forgotten to be really honest it was reminded to me when i went back after five years last year on holidays in paris in particular every literally five minutes i would get approached by either someone asking for money asking for food for alcohol or someone is gonna come look at you ask you your phone number and things like that. Something that honestly, I had completely forgotten about. Growing up, I was getting used to it. It was just normal. And I just felt overwhelmed and very stressed. It's the approach. It's really getting very close to you, asking you for things when you have never met that person before. So that was very strange for me. My friends that I grew up with had to reassure me because I didn't know how to react to it. They told me it's, it's normal. Yes, but I had forgotten. Five years in Australia, I just felt this whole entire time that I was literally in a bubble. It really feels like that when you're in Australia, that you're in a bubble. Obviously, that's not going to apply to everywhere in Australia, right? There's always going to be places that are safer than others. But in general, in my entire time, in Australia, seven years now, I have never been approached. Never. Not once has anyone come to me, asked me for something. Not once has anyone made me feel unsafe. In Australia, it feels like you can honestly walk around, have anything in your hands, your bag open, go on the beach, leave your bags, leave your phone on the sand. No one's going to touch it. And that's something that shocked me 
back then when I was 18. I didn't realize that it could actually be possible to live that way. I'm talking the majority here. I've lived in Sydney, which is the biggest city in Australia. I've lived on the Gold Coast. I've traveled in many different cities and I've never had one issue in seven years. Touch wood. So yes, that's the second point, safety. a little tiny bit better so this is going to be ready by the time we come back later on perfect now let's head out hi Five hours. So we just arrived at the bottom of the beautiful Birdie Head National Park. The idea here is to walk up to the beautiful lookout over Talibajara Creek, where I'm going to bring you as well, because that's where Carl is going to swim. So, number three, alcohol. More specifically, all the rules around alcohol. As maybe a lot of people know, in Europe and in France, I'm gonna have to mention France, we introduced to alcohol legally at 18. We basically have access to alcohol everywhere. You go to a restaurant, to the grocery store, you go to those shops, you know, that never close. I don't know how you call those. The ones where you can literally buy anything, anytime you want. Well, these ones, they sell alcohol as well in France. I would say that France isn't the strictest country in the world. And unfortunately, yes, you can have access to alcohol even when you're not 18. Let me tell you about Australia. Australia is the complete opposite. It is very strict to a point that actually shocked me. So one of the first things that shocked me about it is the fact that you cannot buy alcohol anywhere except bottle shops. For you to be able to buy alcohol, it's not only you're 18, right? From the moment you look under 25 years old, you need an ID to buy alcohol. You will never ever get away with it. They are very strict with that. Someone can lose their license, someone can lose their job if they don't check your ID when you look under 25 years old. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with that, technically speaking, because if alcohol is prohibited for people under 18, we shouldn't be able to access it so easily. So that's one thing. Secondly, Something else that we can do in France and in Europe and in a lot of countries that I've been to you can buy a bottle, bring some plastic cups and go somewhere in a park and drink with your friends, right? In Australia you are not allowed to drink alcohol in public. That is very, very different. Actually, you can get up to $500 of a fine for drinking alcohol on the beach. <laughs> Of course, there's always gonna be people that do it, right? Of course, there's always gonna be those people. And I was actually among them at first, when I first arrived, when I didn't know about it, until a police officer came to our group and said, if in five minutes I come back and I can still see alcohol, everyone, whether you're drinking or not, or whether you have had alcohol in your blood or not, will have a $500 fine. I can tell you that once you get that kind of authority on you, you don't mess around and you get rid of the alcohol. There's a look out there too, it's even more beautiful. Oh, oh mon dieu. My goodness, look at that. Wow. Like a bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here. I got time. Clear to see from up here. This is incredible. Incredible. Wow. One of the things that shocked me how beautiful Australia is. We can sit together 
It's so beautiful, you and me. What are we doing here, my petit ange? We're showing how Australia is incredible and how people should come and visit this beautiful view from above. We're not trying to get a bit closer to it. I know very much Talibodjera Creek, huh? it's just a little bit mysterious for you because I've never shown it to you and I know you're gonna fall in love. Forever free. all over my face i don't even know if we can see of course you can see look at the amount of sand now we're gonna head to the grocery store which might have a little link with point number five for this one i'm actually gonna shoot on my phone if that's okay yes the quality is not gonna be the same it could be on the list for example it's very warm outside but this is necessary every time you go to a grocery store because it is freezing so number six is actually the availability of items we do have everything that we need in australia right everything that we actually need but there isn't as much available as what we could have in europe for example it feels like grocery stores in europe are actually bigger than the ones in australia and when you think of the size of Australia, you would almost think otherwise. They're not small, the ones in Australia, but they're not as big as the ones in Europe. Like in Sweden, for example, it's pretty insane. A whole aisle can be dedicated to a certain type of item. So again, it has everything that you need, but just not as many items of each item. And that's something that really surprised me, so I thought I would share it with you. But I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying that it is a fact and that it is something that very much surprised me. I feel like when I was in the shops, it was a bit difficult for me to really explain myself properly. Obviously, there is plenty of food in Australia, so many different types of food, so many different cuisines. What I was talking about is really proper to grocery stores. Cheese, for example. For cheese, you're going to have cheese with pepper, cheese with mustard, cheese with... In here, it's a little bit more limited per item, but you do have absolutely anything that you need. It really has nothing to do with availability in that sense. What do I feel like? I can feel like I want something, but I don't know what. I want something bad. I can feel it. What did you see? That you were not going to get a trade of my personality in this video because it's a list of things? Absolutely not. <laughs> not happening. Oh, I'm hungry. And I know you know how it feels like. You feel like you feel like having something, you want something, but you don't know what. I want something bad. <laughs> mm. It's an old bar with chocolate. I turned on the light because I think it's probably better. Hey, my friend, the camera, you're going to stop autofocus. You're going to stop. I think I'm going to change you to manual so then you don't have a say. Voila. Mm. Of course. Mm. Excuse me, sorry. I was about to say something. I'm putting my foot down for you. So, number seven. 
<laughs> something that shocked me, okay, and hear me out until the end, please, is that, let's just say that the communities are different. Coming from France, I grew up surrounded by all sorts of people from any color, any race, any, any, any. In Australia, obviously I understand that it is due to the geographical position. I understand that. But obviously in Europe, it's super mixed. Let's just say that here, I do feel like me having curly hair, it's not as common. But it would be the same as going to Sweden, like where Carl comes from, and seeing only blonde people. It's exactly the same. Depending on where you are, you're gonna see a certain type of people. But here, the influence is more obviously from Asia or South Pacific. Whereas in Europe, we have obviously the whole entire Europe and North Africa. So not seeing anyone that kind of looks like me or people in my family like darker darker skins again there is nothing wrong but it is part of the list of the things that shocked me because i was only 18 obviously and i didn't realize that it took me some time to understand the reasons behind next one's a good one number eight people asking you how are you and they say hello let's <laughs> just say that it's something that was really different to my upbringing there's nothing wrong with it i absolutely love that now and i actually do it constantly everywhere you go every time someone says hello to you they say hello how are you today <laughs> and in france if you were to say hello how are you today to someone that you've never met before never seen don't know anything about people would find it strange but you get used to it here but i have to admit that for a long time it was something that i was struggling with how are you today like you knew how i was yesterday Obviously English isn't my first language, so I don't know, maybe it sounds differently in English, but in France you would never have anyone asking you that. <laughs> but I love it now. I really, really love it. It's one of those traits that just, you know, make you feel very good anywhere you go. People are extremely friendly and asking you how are you is just... In the end, I understood that it's just a great way to make people feel at ease very quickly. Number eight. As much as Australia is probably one of the cleanest countries I've seen, anything compared to France is uh, very clean, Sydney is the city of cockroach. And it's not only Sydney, I found out there's a lot of more cities with cockroaches, but Sydney in particular, I hate cockroaches. Like, really, you don't understand how much I hate them. I would yell, even after seven years, I would yell and probably have a panic attack seeing them. I hate them because in France they are considered as dirty. They're associated with anything that has to do with dirt. You would never ever get a cockroach anywhere in France unless it's dirty. And so, yeah, arriving in Sydney, I just didn't expect it. There's a reason behind it. Now I know that it's the climate, obviously, and we're gonna have them more in summer than we would in winter, but still there's still a lot i have been into places that were even more tropical and warmer than sydney nothing beats sydney when it comes to that it's important to mention for anyone going to sydney especially in summer you have to be aware of that i feel like people don't talk about it but you will see cockroaches i know that the first thing that you think of might be oh my god the spiders the snakes i'm gonna get killed no that's Another point that we will talk about later. You have to know that if you go to a hotel, to your Airbnb, there's a big chance that they will be. And they're not small, they're quite big, and they fly. That was number eight. Number nine. We can get paid weekly. I know, I don't know where you come from. I don't know if you're watching this video from Australia or if you're watching this video from anywhere else in the world. We can get paid weekly in Australia or fortnightly. To me, that was a shock because I didn't know that it even existed. I didn't even know that it was possible. There's more that comes with that. If you get paid weekly, a lot of rents also are paid weekly, which is to me, probably the reason why Australia is doing so well. It is so smart, so much easier to manage your money, so much easier to make sure that you put some money aside, that you don't struggle from one week to another, and that you get to pay everything you need to pay. So you basically can live 
really with what you actually have. I know that in a lot of countries, you can be struggling and be tempted by credit cards, basically live above what you can afford. But I feel like in Australia, it's something that you don't need unless you actually need it, right? You just tell yourself that if there's one week that was a bit more difficult than another, you can literally just wait the next week and you will get the money. Just a couple of days. And I think in France, for example, that's definitely something that would make people feel a lot better on a daily basis. That's genius of Australia to do that. It works really, really well. Number 10, and probably my favorite, is how relaxed the lifestyle is in Australia. I'm not gonna lie, I've struggled with the judgment growing up in France. That is pretty much constant and we have to be realistic when it comes to that. People in France or the culture in France is very judgmental and it's not the only one. Once again, I'm not pointing fingers and I absolutely love my culture and love my country, but I have to be honest because that has been my experience growing up. What you wear pretty much define you. There's a lot of taboo on a lot of things that shouldn't be taboo anymore. And that's one thing that really shocked me in Australia. We're talking literally, you could be wearing pyjamas outside, no one would look at you. No one would look at you weirdly. Maybe people will have thoughts, but you're never gonna feel like someone is judging you. I've never had one comment. You get smiles from people. You just really feel relaxed in Australia. You know, the safety, obviously, we've talked about it earlier. The safety plays a big role in that. But I just feel like Australians are really laid back, really easygoing, and that's a real thing. Because I know it's pretty well known, but I had no idea. Like, I moved here, I, I didn't know much, to be really honest. And I found out about it, and it's probably one of my favorite things about this country, is how relaxed and laid back people are. I just felt that's something that I wanted to share. Once again, this video is not to be pointing fingers at anyone. I am really honestly just telling my truth, because you know me, like, for those who have watched other videos, I really keep it real, 100%. I'm not gonna say certain things because I'm French or say other things because, no it's a fact is a fact that's how i feel i felt like that point needed to be mentioned we're getting to the end of this video and there are more things obviously that shocked me i didn't want to make the list too long and i hope that you enjoyed this video when it comes to the insects i know that it is so well known and the sharks as well i need to point out the fact that i've been in australia for seven years have i seen spiders yes how many I can count them. Literally on my fingers, I can count them. It's not something that is so obvious. Yes, of course, there are thousands of insects in Australia, but you need to go into their habitat to see them. That's how I feel. You know, they're not gonna just be all around your house and your toilet. They could be like really randomly here and there, especially if you don't have fly screens, anything can come in at any time. It's normal we share the same planet. If they see a door open, they're gonna go in. But honestly, I have never had any issue except a couple of times where I've had spiders. Yes, when you do see one, it might be quite bigger than what you're used to. I'm not gonna lie, they're not tiny, but you don't see them that often. I've had friends telling me they would never come to Australia because they're scared of spiders. So I'm like, please, come on, no. No, 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 you cannot say that. When it comes to sharks, this country is super protected, super patrolled. You can be sure if there's a shark, everyone's gonna know, and you're most likely gonna be out of the water before it even gets close enough for it to be dangerous. Australia knows how to look after its people. Obviously, if you go on an adventure in the wild and you're not cautious, things can happen. Close windows and fly screens when they need to be closed. The amount of fast food everywhere. 
uh, again it's very 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 different to France you don't get so many fast foods all around I don't really know the reasoning actually behind that so if someone has an answer I would actually be very curious to understand why there are so many fast foods whether it's in Australia or in the US I know it's the same but yeah every 600 meters you'll have something what was in France if you have a McDonald's you're considered cool almost because you have a McDonald's in your city you know of course there's going to be plenty in Paris or in the big big cities but outside of big cities you're not gonna get a McDonald's randomly in the middle of nowhere what was in Australia you do <laughs> we are at the end of this video I hope I didn't offend anyone but I want to hear your opinion that's the thing is like some of these things shocked me surprised me when I was 18 and knew absolutely nothing right now a lot of things have changed and I'm actually appreciative of some of the things that I've mentioned but yeah I want to know you, you you have to make this a conversation you cannot leave me here and obviously please let, let's be kind in the comments let's make it a conversation and I will see you next week for a new video bye bye